What is up, people of YouTube? Welcome to another segment of You've Got Questions, I've Got Cancer. I'm your host, Mike Lynn, and I'm a stage four metastatic melanoma patient who just wants to talk about it. Today's topic is how does cancer and immunotherapy treatment affect your overall life lifestyle, specifically diet, exercise, sleep habits, and mental health. Um, as always, I wanna give the disclaimer that this is from my vantage point as a 35 year old who is still in relatively good physical health while I deal with this, but I think this can be applied to most cancer patients in their situation because it gives a realistic portrayal of how cancer patients have to balance the effects of the disease itself, the effect of the treatment, and the kind of like rigid clinical prescriptions of the diet, exercise, nutrition, uh, you know, mental health stuff versus the reality of balancing them to keep yourself kind of in the game. And what I mean by that is when you have cancer, you're thinking about, you know, extending your life as much as possible by trying to cure or treat the disease. But also, I haven't really talked to any cancer patient who is that strict because you're looking at, you know, an uncertain period of time that you might live. So maximizing your quality of life while keeping it, you know, within a range that doesn't stop you from extending it is most people's goal. So how has immunotherapy affected my lifestyle? Well, we can kind of start with the diet portion of it. Um, I typically eat a lot of calories and I eat what I would describe as a mixed diet. Um, I eat very, very cleanly for most of my meals. You know, I, every breakfast is eggs or a protein shake. And then I, you know, I cook all my own lunches for the most part. And most meals are gonna be based around, you know, proteins and vegetables with some complex carbohydrates because I'm an athlete, I'm constantly working out. Uh, I say mixed diet because I also uh, supplement it with a lot of, you know, candy or like dirtier foods when I eat out with friends. I, I you know, I'm, I'm very health conscious, but I'm just cramming calories for the most part. Now, when you're on immunotherapy, the biggest issue with your diet is you're trying to avoid inflammation. And specifically, you're trying to avoid issues with your stomach as some of the leading side effects are, you know, nausea and digestive issues. So when I started treatment, I cut my diet about to the cleanest point it could be. I pretty much went to a plant-based diet with a little bit of chicken and fish. I cut out all alcohol. I cut out all processed foods. I cut out all sugars. And I've been slowly reintegrating some of the things that I feel are a little safer. I'm still not eating a lot of red meat. I won't be drinking alcohol until the more intensive portion of my treatment is over. And really, I'm just trying to eat foods that are sitting well in my stomach. I'm eating a lot of bread. I'm eating a lot of probiotic laden stuff like yogurt and pickles and kimchi and stuff like that. And I think the thing that I would emphasize as most important in my eyes is I'm hyperhydrating. Um, hydration is important for so many things. In, in my eyes, as a non-nutritionist, but someone who has a fascination with diet nutrition, water gives you the most leeway to mess around with your diet, even for people who aren't on immunotherapy for cancer. And specifically when you're on immunotherapy, you're getting a lot of drugs that are taxing on your body and flushing them out of your system is important. Similarly, when you're getting, you know, IVs putting you all the time, you need your veins to be popped up, which means you need to be hydrated. So that would be my main point of emphasis. If you're gonna be on any sort of IV treatment for cancer, just drink your water. Also, if you don't have cancer, drink your water. Um, that's gonna take us to the second portion of this, which is my exercise habits and how they've been affected. So exercise is probably the most important thing in my life in terms of the way I structure it. Basketball is my favorite thing on the planet. Pretty much all of my life is geared around how can I play the most basketball, or at least a significant portion of that, which means I do mobility every afternoon, I stretch every morning and night, I play basketball three to four days a week, I run and lift to supplement that. Um, as I've gotten onto immunotherapy and this dual Opdivo Uroid treatment, which is a little stronger than just Opdivo, which I did the first time I had cancer, it's definitely affected me. Um, day to day, I'm, I'm fatigued. I've had a little bit of stomach issues, and the thing that's affected my workouts the most is uh, I've had a lot of swelling in my joints, 
And it's not painful or debilitating, but when I get up, like my hips pop, my knuckles are you know, always popping. And so uh, I've tried to reduce some of the impact from my day-to-day -day workouts, which means instead of going for like runs or sprinting to supplement my basketball workouts, I've been doing a lot of like assault bike workouts, or I've been doing, you know, I've been playing less pickup basketball just in this first period of time to make sure my body can handle it. Um, I, you know, even before I had cancer, I, my fitness was the best outlet for me to kind of keep myself mentally lined up. And that's become even more important while I'm on immunotherapy. And I understand that I'm in a very fortunate position to be able to use uh, working out as an outlet because a lot of times when you get onto drugs that are this intensive, you're not able to perform at a high level. You're not able to even you know, get the energy to move around. So as long as I can do this, I'm gonna keep doing it. But if you're on immunotherapy or other drugs for cancer and you can't, don't push yourself. I think that's the other thing that has been told to me time and again by my oncologist and dietitians and other doctors who have you know, had discussions with me about how we're gonna approach this. Exercise is great. It gets the blood running through your body. It, you get to sweat out toxins. It's good for your mental health. But pushing yourself to a point in which it can stress your body is how you get other autoimmune side effects or how you kind of, you know, will get yourself laid up for too long. So exercise as much as you can, but everything in moderation there. Um, another side effect that I've seen or another change to my lifestyle is the amount of sleep that I've been getting. I'm a pretty good sleeper in general. You know, I, I usually get seven to eight hours a night when I lay down, I'm, I'm out, you know, I, I sleep well. I found myself sleeping nine to 10 to 11 hours every day and that's okay. I mean, granted, I wanna try and be productive even while having cancer, but I realized that my body is fighting both cancer itself and dealing with these strong drugs. And so sleeping more is not something that I'm upset about. Also, I've spoken about this in other videos, I, I think, even while I'm holding it together and having fun making videos and going about my life, there's gotta be some you know, small depression that's setting in. And uh, when I get depressed, I sleep more. And so uh, right now I've just noticed that you know, 11 hours is not uncommon, 10 hours, pretty normal for me. Um, and, and that does tie in to the mental health element of all these things. Cancer and going through immunotherapy, it's a radical lifestyle change. I mean, I'm, I'm in doctor's offices constantly. I have to worry about, you know, something that could potentially affect my life for its entirety, and I don't know what duration that is. And staying mentally healthy during it is probably, you know, neck and neck with, can I survive this? Can I treat this? You know, can I make sure cancer doesn't stay inside my body? And when you're adjusting your lifestyle, like I said at the beginning, it's, it's hard to look at a paper that says, you know, don't eat anything outside of these, you know, six items that you're allowed to. It says, don't exercise at a strenuous level. Don't go out and do, you know, X, Y, and Z activity. You, you want to live your life. And that's the balance that I'm trying to strike right now. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is give yourself a little grace if you're in any stressful period of your life. You know, cancer is uh, a facsimile to any trauma that you can think of. If you're going through it and there's, you know, linear ways to get out of it, it's not always realistic that you're just going to follow that path and just hit all these check marks. You need to give yourself a little bit of leeway to do the things that you like and to feel good about your life as you're making it out of these difficult situations. So. When I say to myself, okay, I'm gonna clean up everything I do, I'm gonna focus all my energy on getting better from cancer, it's not that I'm gonna live like a monk for these next year plus as I'm on immunotherapy, it's that I'm gonna try and adjust the dials to a level in which I feel like I can feel good, but at the same time, I'm not jeopardizing my ability to heal. So that's how immunotherapy has affected my lifestyle for now. I have another treatment tomorrow and I'm sure I'll report back about it next week. Um, if you guys want to like and subscribe to, you know, this video on my channel, it would mean a lot to me. I've been getting some good traction, which gives me uh, good feedback in return, and I'd really appreciate it. Until then, I'm Mike Lynn. This is a segment called You've Got Questions, I've Got Cancer, and thank you for watching. Bye!